Hi, this is example number two of section 15.1. So we have a 50 pound crate, so this is 50 pounds that move down, so we are moving down with a velocity of 3 feet per second and is, uh, is in a rough surface with kinetic coefficients, so we have a kinetic coefficient here of 0 0.3 and we have a variable force P, which is equals to 20 T pounds. So, and that force is applied over two seconds. And we are being asked to find the velocity after those two seconds. So what do we do here? So that our equation of motion is force equals to mass acceleration, right? But that could also be written as mass equals derivative of the velocity over time. So we, if we pass time over here, we will have that other equation that is force times differential of time, mass differential of velocity. If we want to find the velocity, we can integrate both sides of the equation, v1 and v2, and then here we find that the integral, which we call impulse, of that force is the difference between the velocity 2 minus velocity 1. And you recall that this is called momentum, right? Linear momentum. So in general, we have that our impulse of, or integral of our force over time is the difference or the change in linear momentum. So we like to apply this approach for this uh, problem. And the first thing that we will do is draw our free body diagram. We always have to see which forces are applied to our system. So we draw our crate and then we have the force that we is being applied, which is P equals 20 T pounds. We have a normal force that is not necessarily in the middle of our uh, uh, block. We have our weight. Remember that the weight is always vertical, and in this case it's 50 pounds. And it's very important to, to understand that if this, you have to get very comfortable uh, knowing this angle, if this is a, an inclined uh, surface, this angle is 30 degrees, right? Because this angle is 30 degrees. So we also have that our surface is rough. So we have a friction force. It opposes always to the motion. So if I'm going down, my friction force is going up. So friction. Okay, so that's my free body diagram, and I am not going to do a ki kinetic diagram because I am applying a, this new approach that is the linear momentum approach. So we add linear impulses in Y that will be the integral from zero to two of the forces in Y. Y naming Y, I'm going to have an inclined system so this is my y direction, will be n minus weight cosine of 30 degrees, the time, and that will be equals to my mass or velocity 2 in y minus mass velocity in 1, in position 1 in y. But here we notice that we don't have any velocities in the y direction. So this is 0 and this is 0. So that integral is 0. What I have inside the integral is 0. So that gives me exactly the same information if I would have add forces in y direction. So when I do not have any motion, using the impulse of the force gives me the same information as adding forces. And that will be n equals weight cosine of 30. The weight is 50, and cosine of 30, you know that is for square root of 3 over 2. So my normal, it will be equals to 43.3 pounds. Why do I need that? 
because as we know, my friction force is equal to the kinetic coefficients times the normal. Since I already know the normal, which is 43.3, and the kinetic coefficient is 0 0.3 times 43.3 pounds. So we have our friction force. We can add impulse in my x direction. So I will add my impulse in the x direction. And I have all the forces that are applied in the x direction. So from 0 to 2, I have the friction force minus my force P minus the component of the weight, which will be weight sine of 30 degrees, that over time. And that will be equal to the difference in mo linear momentum. So that will be M v 2 x minus m v 1 x. And I have most of these values. So what I want to find is the velocity after two seconds. So it's that velocity. So we will solve for that velocity. And then we have, that will be the integral, the 0, 2 of my friction force. That I already said that is 0 0.3 times 43.3 minus p. P is 20D minus the weight. The weight is 50. Sine of 30, you know that is 1 half. This I have to integrate it respect to time. And that will be equals to mass. Remember that the mass is a derived unit. So this is 50 over 32.2. And that's the velocity I need to find, minus 50, 32.2, times the initial velocity, which is given. So in all these equations, the only unknown that I have is the velocity of 2x. So I will solve for that. I have to solve that integral. This is a constant, so the integral of that will be 0 0.3. 43.3, I haven't done the multiplication, so I'll do it at the end, time minus 20t squared over 2 minus 50.5 is 25t, and all that between 0 and 2. When I evaluate that in 0 and 2, well, I just have to multiply by 2, right? Plus 50, 32.2 times 3 will be equals to 50, 32.2, velocity of x. And evaluating that in two seconds, I can find for t equals two seconds, right? I can find that the velocity 2x will be, so I solve for that, and I get a velocity of 44.2 feet per second. So as I said, this is another way to to solve the problem. And why did we solve the problem in this manner? Because we have the force is given in terms of t. So anytime that I want to relate force with time, with velocity, this is a very good approach.